Well, hello and welcome back to the Chaps Guide. Today, I am going to be taking a pair of shoes, this pair of Sanders Bremer Brogues, as you can see, right, I recently featured them in a video where I bought this pair of shoes from eBay for £12 and 58 pence. It's a pair of good quality leather shoes, you know, really solid sole, good uppers, nothing wrong with these shoes at all. But I bought them for a song because I bought them from uh, eBay, an auction site, and I'm going to show you how I build these shoes up, make them look fantastic again. Undoubtedly, they've been neglected. They're a little bit dusty, a little bit dirty. They've not been worn for many years, I don't think. The leather feels a bit tough. It feels a little bit lacking in conditioning and hydration. So I'm going to show you how I'm going to bring these shoes back to life by some love, care and attention. And it would be great to see what we are left with at the end. Hello folks, so here they are, here are that lovely pair of Sanders Bremer Brogues that I'm going to sort out, bring back to life, and you know, let's hope that we can turn them into something that anybody would want to wear. So, first of all, how am I going to do that? I'm going to use some products that are going to bring them back to life. Now, these shoes have probably been in the back of somebody's wardrobe for a long time. I can see that they're visibly dusty and, uh, you know, they've clearly not had any love, care and attention. So my first stop is going to be some Safia Renovator or Renovator. Now, those people who are aware of this stuff will know that, first of all, Safia is an internationally renowned and probably regarded as the best manufacturer of uh, footwear care products. So things like polish, creams and this stuff, Renovator. And this is a great product for bringing life back to a tired pair of leather shoes because it conditions them, hydrates them, things like that. After that, I'm going to apply at least one coat of that to bring the leather up to scratch. After that, I'm going to use this. Now, this is another cream by the same company, Safia, and this is what they call Pomodier Cream Polish. Now, it's black in colour and it is, it's got a lot of pigmentation in it, so it's, it will return some of the colour, which, you know, the colour, although they look black, even black gets leached away in time as the ultraviolet of the sun gets to work on it, you know, and they, they lose some of that sharpness of colour. So this cream polish is going to add some pigmentation back, some black to the black, and it's also got plenty of um, oils and waxes contained within it as well. So as well as, you know, it'll do a bit of hydration work, it'll also add the colour, and it'll just make them look all together better, and it'll prepare them for the final step, which I'm going to use today, and that's wax polish. So I'm using Safia. It's a suite of products from Safia today because they are acknowledged as being the best. There's no fairness to that. And uh, this wax polish will give the final coat over the shoes, which hopefully will bring them up to a fine shine. Uh, well, as fine shine as they can be, because you know we're you know we're starting with a product here, the shoes, which are a grain leather. So you know if they were if they were a a, a fine um, finish, a sheen finish, I would be able to potentially put some sort of a, um, a mirror polish on them, but that's not going to be possible on these shoes because they are a grained leather. So we're not going to do that. So there we go. And to help me along the way, I'm going to use this brush. This is a horsehair brush, 100% horsehair, as you can see. Um, good quality brush, bought from a normal cobbler's, nothing expensive there. And just a simple cotton cloth, which I've already used several times before. So I'm going to move these fellas out the way so I've got some space to work. I'm also going to move one of the shoes away, so I think I shall move this one. So we have something comp to compare this fella with at the end. Right, so start with the, the Renovator. So it's a hydration um, cream, basically. Now to help me with this shoe, you can see the shoe's a little bit tired. It's, a, you know, it's obviously not had any um, last in the middle of it, so I'm going to take this wooden cedar wood last, and I'm going to place it inside the shoe, which will help the shoe retain some of its form. Tight fit, which is good. And that will, you know, make it a lot easier for me when I'm polishing it, because the leather is now solid, so it's not going to, you know, uh, warp away when I touch it. And I've got positive enforcement, reinforcement from within. And also when I'm applying these polishes, I don't want any creases where perhaps some of the cream or the polishes could get lost. So how am I going to do that? Well, first of all, just a normal cotton cloth 
wrapped around the finger. That's all I'm going to do, nothing more than that. Um, and simple wrapped around the finger, dip it into the Sophia uh, Renovator, and I'm going to apply that all over the surface of the leather of the shoe. And I'm going to be quite sparing in the quantity that I use here, because clearly this pair of shoes hasn't seen any polish, any material whatsoever for a long, long time. I'm going to hazard a guess that this leather has not uh, been treated in any way, shape or form in a number of years. You can tell, you know, it's not exactly um, desiccated leather or anything like that. It's not totally dried out. It's good quality leather but you can tell when it's not seen any polish or any love for a long time. So I'm going to make sure that that's all over the shoe and in all the nooks and crannies. That's one of the advantages of using a cloth on your finger, you know, really instead of using a brush to apply it at this stage, because you really get to feel where the bumps and lumps are on the shoe and you get to sense, you know, where your leather polish is going. Now you can go all around the welt, so the um, the sole rather, and uh, get it in there, get it all around, because it's all made of leather, so it'll all benefit from the application of the Safia, which hopefully will bring a bit of life to this pair of shoes. So I'm going to make sure that's everywhere, all in all the nooks and crannies. Now some of the little broguing, as you can see, some of the Sophia has gone into the holes of the broguing. That's absolutely nothing to worry about. That will all come out in a moment or two when we get to work with our horsehair brush. So all I need to do now is to let that dry for a minute or two so that we can brush it off ready to go to the next stage. So we'll just give that a minute or two to dry. Now that hasn't taken very long, you know, just a few minutes really. And uh, I can see it's now dried to a dull uh, sort of uh, film over the shoe. And we're ready to move along to the next stage, which is removing any of that material which hasn't found its place in the leather. So when we were pushing it in, we were, you know, making sure it got all in the nooks and crannies. Now all the bits that lie on the top which haven't gone into the leather, haven't been absorbed, we want to remove. That, so it doesn't interfere with the next phase. And I'm just going to use the horsehair brush and I'm going to apply the brush liberally over the leather. So all I'm doing is polishing off any of that material. Now this is where any of that, um, any of that renovator which had gone into the broguing can be brushed off and removed. And before you know it, you know, we've already got um, a nice, sort of look starting to come on the shoe. It's a dull, I mean, as I say, it's not a polish as such, the Renovator, but if your shoe is truly very dry, at this stage, even at this stage, you will already see a bit of an improvement starting to show on the shoe, because as the leather becomes hydrated and conditioned, it'll start to look better. Because like all things, leather, it was a living thing. We must never forget that. And like living things, it needs hydration and it needs uh, love and care and attention to thrive. So we've added some hydration to the shoe. Now, although the shoe is already looking a lot better, I have to say, I mean, hope you can have a quick glance at that. Let's move it around. It's already looking a bit brighter, but uh, to move it on to the next stage, I'm going to use the Sophia Pomodia cream, cream Polish, which is uh, absolutely jam packed with lots of oils and waxes, which will improve the leather. It'll continue to condition and hydrate it, and it'll make it look a lot better as well. Now, God, you forget sometimes when you remove the top of these polishes, um, you know, the odor which comes out, very different smell to Sophia to many of the other products. Um, I wouldn't say it's organic, but we are, you know, it does say on the side that it's beeswax based, and you certainly get that more, natural smell with this stuff than you might with some of the you know other products you find which they tend to have more of a petroleum based smell you absolutely don't get that with uh, Sophia products they they certainly you know um, start their lives I think and their their, uh, their their sort of scientific composition with natural products and that's evident in the odor. So now that our shoe has had a bit of a conditioning, we just want to add some more color and some waxes and some oils, which will make it look 
better at the same time as looking after the leather. So again, same thing, just dip my finger into the polish. Now a little goes a long way here, um, so I'm just going to apply it in the same way that I did with the Renovator by carefully massaging it into all of the areas of the shoe to make sure that everywhere gets a fair and equitable element of the product because it's the product that's going to make the shoe look better it's going to bring it to life and you can see i'm making sure that my my finger gets into the welt and all the little areas particularly around the sole the edge of the sole because that's lost color you know that's uh, clearly an area which shows up on a shoe when it's had a hard life so i'm making sure that my my finger in the polish gets into those areas and we are getting that uh, polish all over the shoe now as i say this isn't a polish as such it's a cream polish um, and many people you know if you were happy with that you might just apply this as your main layer of polish you don't really need to go on to the stage we're going to go on to next and that is applying a, uh, a wax polish. Um, if you're the sort of person who's happy with the sort of finish we'll get at the end in a moment, and you'll see that shortly once we brush this off in the same way as we just did with the Renovator, um, you could be quite happy and leave that to that. Now, I've applied it all over the shoe as far as I can in the places that I've been able to reach. Again, we just need to leave that for a few minutes. It says five minutes, uh, but in reality, if you do it nice and slowly and quite liberally, you'll find that it dries as you go along. And uh, before you know it, you'll be ready to polish it off and move along to the next stage. So we'll just leave that for a moment or two. And when we come back, we'll just brush that off. So here we go. So it's been about five minutes now. I've left the shoe alone just to dry in the air done nothing else to it and uh, just been admiring the shoe actually as we've been applying that polish and there are actually no marks blemishes cuts or any other scuffs on these shoes which makes it all the more remarkable that I was able to buy these off eBay for merely for merely sort of um, you know under under 13 pounds it's it's it amazes me that such deals can be achieved so now that the the polish has settled a bit and you know uh, absorbed into the leather now i'm just going to take my same horsehair brush and i am again as i did before just going to apply the brush all over the leather to make sure that none of the material which hasn't at this point been absorbed into the leather uh, is now being removed from the surface of the shoe uh, this is an important part because any big if there were any big lumps of polish left of course it would certainly interfere with the final stage which is the application of the wax polish so just giving it a good old brush over and uh, you know it is friction and it is heat which is doing the work for us here so the friction of the the bristles and the heat which is being generated by the friction of those bristles helps the the leather to accept the polish and the polish to do its work and come up to a lovely little sheen for us. Now with a grained leather, of course, it's you know somewhat perhaps less obvious uh, than it would be if it was a, a fine, smooth leather. You can't see for you know in great let strides just how much better that looks. I mean, sat here looking at it, um, whereas previously the leather was dull, rather lifeless rather dry looking now i can say that it's got a, a luster to it a sheen it looks pretty good uh, it looks quite smart actually i have to say uh, and i'm going to take it one more stage from this so the final stage i'm going to go today or really the final stage i can go today is the wax polish the reason i say the final stage i can go because of the grained leather now i'm a fan of bringing my dress shoes up to a mirror shine uh, and you know it always looks the smartest it draws the eye people always pass comments when you shine your shoes up you know to the to the final degree the mirror shine but with a grained leather I mean it's not worth I don't think doing that with this pair of shoes because you're never going to get that 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 sort of bling which you get from smooth leather and it would be a lot of work for not a lot of return so all I'm going to do with this pair of shoes to finish off now because as I say these could quite comfortably be worn as they are but all I'm going to do is I'm going to apply some Sophia uh, wax polish now this is the Medal Dior it's the best of the range that they do they do different tiers of polish but this would be considered to be the finest one 
and uh, uh, as it says on the front it's been around since 1925 and again largely organic composition things like beeswax canuba wax and a number of other waxes make up this material and uh, it is excellent actually for bringing up a shine now if we were going to do a mirror shine there's another product that i would have used called um, sophia mirror gloss which really just helps bring that mirror shine i've done a whole video on bringing a pair of shoes up to a mirror shine please go and uh, avail yourself of that information but today all we're going to do is we're going to apply this normal uh, wax polish all over the shoe in exactly the same way as we've just done at the previous two stages so all i'm going to do is dip my my uh, fingers again on my rag into the wax polish and i'm going to apply it um, you know, not, not so liberally as I did perhaps with the other ones, because all this is doing is kind of giving a little overcoat over the shoe, a protective overcoat of wax. And that protective overcoat means that this pair of shoes will be not only looking a lot better, because the wax polish will give us that final layer of sheen, which we really, we really love to see on a pair of shoes, for sure, but also it's a protecting factor. So, you know, when you've got the wax polish on the shoe, it will uh, it'll repel the elements. So water, you know, will, will be repelled away. Not only water, but this time of year, I mean, you know, I'm in the UK where I'm just coming out of uh, a very, very wet winter time. And, uh, you know, your shoes are under attack all the time. When it's cold and the roads are gritted or laid with salt to help motorists, all that salt always ends up on the pavement. And you know that's the killer for leather, really, isn't it? Salt, it, uh, it sort of leaches away the moisture and the look of your shoes. So I've just covered that with one coat of the wax polish. And all I'm gonna do for a moment is just let that, I mean, it's already dried to a dull, um, a dull finish, which means it's dry and I'm comfortable. I don't need to wait any longer. I'm really ready to get on and apply the brush. So in exactly the same way as we've done twice already today, I'm going to apply that brush and uh, as ever I'm going to feel quietly satisfied here because I can see what's happening to these shoes. They're starting in my hands to come to life. They truly are. Now all that polish is working in unison with its, uh, its two colleagues who have gone before the, the cream polish and the renovator and already I can see that it's really starting i'm not going to say starting to pop you know that's not what we're going to get today from these shoes it's not that sort of leather but what we're going to do is have a much better looking shoe all around and uh, just by touching it up making sure it's looking good there we go so i am satisfied with that now we've got a lovely finish on that shoe it's a it's a luster it's a shine and god looking at these shoes close up i can really see what a bargain these were for under 13 pounds. You know, you just look at that leather. There is absolutely no flaw on those at all. And uh, that is a handmade pair of all leather shoes from a British heritage manufacturer. And all I've done is applied, a, you know, three layers of shoe care uh, product to that. And now, I mean, I'm not gonna say it looks like new. I dare say these shoes are many, many years old. I know that, uh, but they look, as good as any pair of shoes possibly could. Now, I'm gonna bring in its buddy here because obviously a good comparison is, uh, you know, always good to look at. And it's very difficult. I mean, you're not gonna be able to take any of the, any of the, uh, the true comparison here because they are black and black does tend to hide the sort of, the, the beauty of these shoes, I think, when it's being filmed. But all I can tell you is that you know, there is a definite difference. I'll take some um, still photographs, perhaps in natural light and add them to the end of the video. Uh, you might be able to see a comparison, but actually these shoes were in pretty good condition before I started. But now, uh, you know, with this one shoe, it's been properly treated. And I have to say, you know, I would have no problem wearing this with a suit, um, with a pair of, you know, slacks, with a blazer or whatever, anywhere. I think they are absolutely lovely and, uh, uh, do you know what? I'm very pleased with them indeed. So there we go. That was the experience of using all of those different Safia products to bring us a fantastic pair of shoes to life 
from what were somewhat dead, tired looking shoes that clearly had you know, languished in the back of somebody's wardrobe for a long time and they just wanted to get rid of and I was more than happy to take them off their hands for under 13 pounds. And now I've got a beautiful pair of, you know, handmade, British manufactured, all leather shoes, and I've paid, what, 12 pounds 58 for them. Almost unbelievable. And those shoes could last many, many years. Now the reality is, I wanna share this loving experience, so I'm gonna put those shoes back onto eBay and uh, I'm gonna see if I can share them with somebody else, because I don't actually need another pair of brogues in my collection. This was an experience and an experiment to show you what was possible. So somebody's gonna benefit from a lovely pair of shoes and I'm gonna keep the price very modest. I'm, I'm gonna hope that I can pass on uh, that, that sort of positive energy when it comes to dressing well and being stylish for men. So uh, I hope you've learned something today in me showing you my sort of regime for taking a pair of old and tired shoes and bringing them back to life something you can do to a pair of shoes that are lying perhaps unloved in the back of your wardrobe. So please let me know if it's worked out for you. Leave me a message in the comment section below. And if you've enjoyed this video, click the thumbs up button. Show me that you like it. When you're there, click the subscribe button as well. That way you won't miss future videos of a very similar nature to this when I upload them. And uh, yeah, please, until I see you the next time at the Chaps Guide, stay safe, looking sharp, and take care of yourself.